So the next thing we're going to want to want to be able to calculate is the percent composition of a substance. Uh, now you, we've used uh, percentage uh, quite a bit. Um, if you've ever calculated your grade, you know that you're going to take the total number of points, um, of, you know, in a in a course and divide by the number or part that you were able to earn. And if you multiply that by 100, what you get is percent course. Now, um, you can be, uh, you can do two things. You can do percent by mass, which is first thing that we're going to uh, discuss, or you can also do percent by volume. So you want to be able to indicate um, exactly what you're going to be talking about. Uh, so if you're doing percent by mass, you would do percent m over m to indicate that the composition is being analyzed by as a function of mass or Percent by weight is also used, so WW, W over W, but they, numerically they mean the same thing. If you're talking about percent by volume, you would say percent V over V. Okay. So one of the things we'd want to calculate is say, let's ask, what is the percent by mass of chlorine in a compound C2Cl4F2? So again, we're going to take the mass of the part, chlorine, and divide that by the mass of the entire compound. So the percent by mass would be the mass of chlorine divided by the mass of the whole uh, compound, C2Cl4F2, and of course multiply that by 100%. Now, uh, notice that there are four atoms of chlorine in the molecule. So the same thing is that if you have a mole of that uh, molecule, you have four moles of chlorine. So you do need to take that into account. So percent by mass of chlorine would be four times the molar mass of chlorine, 35.453 grams per mole, divided by... We're going to add up everything. So 2 times 12.011 for carbon plus 4 times 35.453 uh, grams per mole for chlorine plus 2 times 18.998 for fluorine. And then, of course, we're going to, after doing that, we're going to multiply it by 100%. And so what you will find is the percent by mass for chlorine in this compound is 75.903%. Um, because percent by mass is mass of part over a whole, um, we can easily use this as a conversion factor. So if we know um, that sodium chloride is 39 point, or 39% by mass sodium, if we know that our sample contains 2.4 grams of sodium, we can determine the entire number of uh, grams of sodium chloride. Um, so when we see the percent, we know that it is uh, percentage, and so that's based on 100. So if you see something like 39%, you can always say that it's 39 uh, parts of the, uh, 39 grams of the part, in this case sodium, over 100 grams of the total, which would be sodium chloride. So when you think about it that, you can easily see how we can use percentage as a conversion factor. Okay? If we have 2.4 grams of sodium, and we want to figure out how many grams of sodium chloride we have, well, we're just going to use that conversion factor, reverse it so that we can cancel out sodium and give us grams of sodium chloride. So in 100 grams of sodium chloride, we have 39 grams of sodium. Grams of sodium are going to cancel out, and that will give us 6.2 grams of sodium chloride. Okay, uh, uh, the next thing we're going to use and um, or need to calculate is the empirical formula of a compound. Now, we briefly discussed this when we showed the different ways we could show uh, a molecule, whether it be molecular formula, structural formula, and then there was empirical formula, if we remember the lowest whole number molar ratio. 
Now, the reason why empirical formula is important is that we can get it, we can achieve or determine the empirical formula of compound based on percent by mass or uh, uh, percent by mass um, data, and percent by mass is easily uh, um, determined using gravimetric methods in the laboratory. Uh, so, if you know the percent by mass of all of your compounds, say X, Y, Z in a compound, uh, what we can do is convert them to moles, which we know how to do by using the molar mass or molecular weight of the compounds. And then what you're going to do is divide them all by the smallest. Uh, to get a molar ratio, or three to two, you know, three to two to one, or two to one to one point three. Um, so if z is your smallest value, you're going to divide all of those by the number of z moles. Okay. Oftentimes that not is not going to give you the um, a whole number ratio, and of course the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio. So you want to turn the molar ratio into the empirical formula by multiplying by any integer, any value, to get a whole number. Now what integer you need to um, multiply by will depend on your molar ratio and um, of course what decimal value you have there. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. We've got some information that's determined from uh, gravimetric methods in the lab. So we've, we've uh, determined the percent by mass of aspirin, which active ingredient is, uh, is actually called acetosalicylic acid. And we know that it's 60% carbon, 4.48% hydrogen, and then around 35.53% oxygen. Notice that these always don't equal 100% exactly because, of course, there's experimental error that are going to um, maybe just uh, affect these a small amount. Okay, um, so we have percent by mass, and so we know that we want to go from grams to moles, so where are grams coming from? Well, a lot of times we can just assume that we have a 100 gram sample. And if we have a 100 gram sample and we have 60% carbon, we know that means we have 60.00 grams of carbon. Okay, so just like we did before, we're going to convert all these to moles, then we're going to get to the molar ratio, and then we're going to get to an empirical formula by multiplying by any uh, value that we need to. Okay, so if we have 60.00 grams of carbon, we, need, we know that in one mole of carbon, there's 12.011 grams of carbon. That will cancel out. And that will give us 4.99 moles of carbon. We're going to do the same thing for hydrogen and then for oxygen. So if there's 4.48 grams of hydrogen in a 100 gram sample, we know that there, in one mole of hydrogen, there's 1.00794 grams of hydrogen. Those are going to cancel out, giving us 4.44 moles of hydrogen. And then one last calculation to moles and that's for oxygen so 35.53 grams of oxygen. One mole of oxygen contains 15.9994 grams or just 999. Grams of oxygen cancel out. Calculated to be 2.22 moles of oxygen. Now we can easily see that moles of oxygen is our lowest number, so we're going to divide everything by that to get our ratio. 2.22 divided by 2.22. And what we get is 1, of course, for oxygen. That happens to be 2 for hydrogen. And carbon comes out to be 2.25. Okay, so that is the molar ratio, 2.25 to 2 to 1. But if we want to get the uh, empirical formula, we do have to get to whole numbers. So we know we want to get rid of this decimal. So the easiest way to get rid of decimals is think about what they are as a fraction, 0.25, and then multiply whatever value you need to 
to get to a whole number. So 0.25 is 1 fourth. And so if we multiply by 4, we'll get a whole number. Okay, and if we, sort of like algebra, if we do this to 1, we have to do it to all of them. So we're going to multiply 2.245 times 4. That's going to be 9, 8 for hydrogen, and then, uh, excuse me, 4 for oxygen. Okay, and now that we have whole numbers, that is our empirical formula. So empirical formula for acetosalicylic acid in aspirin is C9H8O4. Now, if we want to go to the molecular formula, the absolute ratio of atoms within a molecule, we're going to need one additional piece of information. We're going to need the molar mass. And we can, use, we can determine molar masses using mass spectrometry, which we saw when we talked about isotopes of chlorine. Uh, we can uh, determine molar mass using that instrumentation. So if we got the empirical formula through gravimetric methods in the lab, and let's say that was for this organic compound, butane dione, um, to be C2H3O, and we want to figure out the molar the uh, molecular formula, what we're going to do is we are going to need to multiply that lowest whole number ratio, C2H3O, times some integer n to get our molecular formula. Okay, And so how do we get that n? Well, we're actually going to divide the molar mass, which we got using mass spectrometry, uh, divided by the sort of the formula weight of the empirical formula. So what's the formula weight of the empirical formula? Okay, well, there's two carbons in the empirical formula, so we're going to just calculate that out. 12.011 grams per mole plus 3 times 1.0079789 grams per mole plus oxygen 15.0. 999 nine grams per mole. And that will give us a value of 43.045 grams per mole. And if we take our molecular weight divided by the empirical formula's molecular weight, we'll get our n value. So if we take 86.09 grams per mole divided by 43.045 grams per mole, those grams per mole cancel out, and that's just going to give us a value, and this gives us 1.998. And because we want it to be an integer, and of course there's some experimental uh, error in all these methods, that's about 2. So what we're going to do is calculate, or going to multiply C2H3 times 2, and that will give us the molecular formula of C4H6O2.